Yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the April 5th meeting of the Historic District Commission. Uh, I'd like to say the board's actions in these matters have been deemed to be quasi-judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue should be raised at this point or it will be deemed waived. Um, before we get started, I have a little secret that I want to share with everyone that actually I am indeed hard of hearing. <laughs> so 10 years in rock and roll and 40 years as a contractor, guess what? <laughs> So I, I try very hard, but I, I want everyone to please, um, you know, make an effort to say, Mr. Chairman, when you raise your hand in that way, my head will swing in the proper direction because it frequently does it. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm going to introduce uh, everyone. I guess Joanna Landis isn't here. We'll start with Dr. Dan Brown. Good evening. Martin Ryan. Good evening. And Reagan Rudy. Good evening. Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Nick, oh, I've lost your name. <laughs> oh, no. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> I also have memory problems. <clears throat> Help me. Who are you looking for here? Margo. 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 <laughs> yeah, Margo Dory. Good evening. Nick Cracknell. Good evening. Uh, Councillor uh, Rich Blaylock. Good evening. Mar uh, I've got Margo Doring on the other side. I'm sorry. Uh, David Adams. Good evening. And Karen Buffard. Good evening. Okay, um, so first we start off with the approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, should I recuse myself at this point? I was right. not there. Move approval. Uh, Mr. Karen? Chair? Uh, yes, on item number five, um, I guess I would ask that either um, it be stated uh, the very last sentence that um, I left for a prior commitment or that the the line be struck, whichever is preferred. Yeah. So we need to strike that line. You did not leave the meeting. I did leave the meeting oh. because of a previously a oh, previous okay. commitment, but it doesn't say that, so it looks like I stormed out. <laughs> 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 okay, you did not storm out. Yeah. All righty. Um, so we had a motion. Mr. Mr. Chair, I yep. can't vote. I wasn't here either, so we'll okay. be for that. David? Get a motion. I made Did a motion. anyone second it? Second. second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? All right. Now, Nick, it's time for Mr. the administrative <clears throat> approvals. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I need to recuse myself from number six. Number six. Does yeah. anyone else have I think uh, I also have to recuse myself from that one. That's the okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Mr. We'll Chair, uh, number one for me. Okay. So, six and one. All right. So uh, we should do those first, don't you think? Sure. Okay. It's so 11 Chief Street. 11 Chief Street has been on the agenda for a few months now, I think. Um, hopefully someone from the good from the property is here to <clears throat> maybe give us a brief overview. There were questions when this was originally submitted about the location of the HVAC system on the back of the building. I think the siding is also part of this request to remove the vinyl siding, replace it with cedar clapboards, uh, architectural asphalt shingles are being proposed, mm -hmm. and some trim work. Uh, but if you could just go to the podium. Did I leave anything out? Um, and just your name for the record. Uh, my name is Ken Nolan Finkel. I'm here representing Profile Homes for uh, administrative approval as far as I'm aware of, uh, solely HVAC location and for the roofing architectural shingles, as you mentioned. So I take it the wood siding is underneath the vinyl siding that was described in the application, so it's just a replacement in kind with the vinyl being removed? Um, I actually you... don't have any information as far as siding. That's okay. not what I'm here for today. I thought, that. I don't think I thought it said that. I don't think there is vinyl. It just said that the, the siding is in need of replacement. It is. Okay. Uh, we'll keep going. I'll All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just just approval for uh, the architectural shingles. We're we're just replacing the ones that are in place and putting in matching color and style for the roofs in in the neighborhood, just to match. <laughs> um, and then, as far as HVAC location, uh, we're installing heat pumps 
Um, so that condenser location is going to be on the back of the building um, near where that parking spot is, I believe. Should be up. Oh. So that window right there, just to the left of the window on the brick. Yeah, on the brick or over here. Over there. Yep. So I think this is the building with the vinyl siding, according yeah. to the first page of the exactly. submission. Exactly. And it so does say it needs to be replaced. It's coming off. Yeah. Okay. So you do have some siding to take off. Or or it's not part of this if you can't speak to it. No, then it, it is. It will strike it. It's written yeah. here. Um, it's part of the application. Sure, it looks like it's part of the application yeah. in this image on the screen yep. that shows the property lines. But that addition that has the vinyl on it is part of your project, That right? is part of the project, yes. Yeah. All right. So whatever, the paperwork here from Ken and Nolan Finkel, is that you? Yes, that's me. So you've said it had vinyl on it, and it's being removed. Okay. Back in November. Yeah. That was a long question? time ago. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes. Or two. Um, the location of the HVAC unit is to the left or the right of the bulkhead? Um, to the left. And what sort of screening are you proposing? Screening. What kind of screening are you proposing? Um, I don't know how to answer that question, honestly. Did okay. you plan to put anything around it to uh, create um, as, a visual barrier? Uh, well, generally, we just have our HVAC contractor yeah. do the install on that, and I, they're generally aware of the codes and pull their own permits for it. And Yeah, it's less a code issue than the HDC's design guidelines. Does it need if, it in if this I mean, if there's a suggested way to do it, we will just do exactly what yeah. you guys wish. I don't know that it's quite as necessary in this yeah. location. What do you think? That was my thought. I think it would be a kindness to the neighbors that live in a very tight, that, that court is very, very tight. Yes, you're, you're set back a little bit, but people walk past there all the time. And your machine's going to be visible and, and whirring. Is, is it more of a noise or a visual issue? Both. OK. Yep. I, I know there's, we're, we're planning on using the same style and size um, that 13 Chief Street is using, and we were planning on just matching that. Nick, should we uh, ask some other people on the other side? Yeah, go ahead. Or do you just want to put screening on it? No. What do you think? No. Anybody? No? Well, I think if we've, I remember that we approved screening for this, for this, uh, the other property on Chief Street. So if they're copying that, can we just say to copy, copy that? Okay. <clears throat> I don't think it's necessary. Um, so we've got um, some opinions on the screening. So essentially what it's either something you can lift off and set to one side when the person comes and, and looks at it. So it's essentially a fence, mm -hmm. right? Or it could be a gate if you wanted to hinge it. So it could have one by three balusters and, you know, look like a picket fence type of thing. That's one of the many screens we've approved. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> yes. Can I, can I say, I think I'm in agreement with Mr. Ryan. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this thing. It, this is not, yes, it's public, and yes, indeed, people wander through the, the alleyway and to dodge the trash cans and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> but this isn't an in-your-face sort of situation, nor is it something I think that's going to have an uh, issue with the quality of life of a next door neighbor. Um, I don't think in the alleyway it's going to help with the sound. And I wonder if it's just one more bit of clutter that that alleyway has uh, to way too much of. Um, we could we could do uh, maybe just could, a paint job. <laughs> <laughs> True. We could vote on this as a stipulation. We could vote on this first to see if we want to add this and then vote on the bill itself. I'd make that motion, Mr. Chairman. OK, would somebody second this? Second. So what we're voting on is screening for this unit. And it's about a five-foot screen. Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those uh, against? Nay. Against? Against. Nay. Aye. OK, so now um, have we reached the point? Has he explained everything for I think so. OK, Nick. Um, so all those in favor of these improvements, say aye. 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 And against? You have your approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much appreciated.
All right. The next application is 303 Pleasant Street, which is a request um, to replace the rear entry stairs uh, on Washington Street. Are we going to do number six first? Then? Oh, is yeah, sorry. Refusals? 303, which is it's also, also 303. So both of those? Both of those? Who's no. out? No, no, we just have to be out. You're out because of the sign. Okay. Okay. So 303 Pleasant number six is a proposal to put a historic plaque on the building. And no? Yes? Well, not exactly. <laughs> Hi. Um, Mary Thomas, actually representing a committee of folks um, citywide who are trying to get a historic plaque program sort of reinvigorated oh. for, it's, it's not just me, I had to fill out the application by putting Got it. my name and address in right. so that it would be accepted. But this is, uh, I'm just here representing. District wide. It's a yes. blanket approval you're yes, seeking. Sir. Yes. Will you be putting one on your, your home as an initial pilot or, um, I or, or not? I don't know. Okay. Um, are we all on number six here? Looking yes. At this thing? It's on the screen. This oh. is the proposed sign. Okay. Um, what happened to the approval we gave for these signs about two or three years? Five ago? years ago. It was five years ago. Yes, yep. sir. Um, I have an example of the sort of uh, style and design that was approved at that time. This new one is very similar to that, but somewhat different. We just thought it would be prudent to ask permission, basically. Barry, what was the main reason the, the previous approval wasn't going to work moving forward? I think, Nick, that it just got, um, it's not really a matter of that. It, it kind of got bogged down in, um, I think the method of ordering them was not as straightforward as, as was hoped, as was hoped it was going to be. Um, and I think an online portal for ordering was never really constructed, um, as well as sadly, the gentleman who was going to be fabricating them sadly passed oh away um, in, I think, 2020. So uh, it just kind of never got off the ground. And we're kind of trying to get this started back up um, in part because this year the city is celebrating its, its 40th um, its celebration events and we thought we could maybe tie in with that as well. Thank you. Sure. Does I have an example here yeah. of one. If you have it, you might. A hard, a, a real example? Yes, sir. Awesome. If you could take it down there, okay. it'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, what am I supposed to say? This is uh, this is what I want. This is why I don't like all the uh, cedar. Yes, yeah. So um, the one that's on the screen has a lot more text on it. Is this? Yeah. What, what's the? That's correct. The Those are mock-ups that are just. Uh, so we are still. Um, kind of, we're still working together with the Portsmouth, New Hampshire 400th, as well as the Portsmouth Historical Society slash Portsmouth Advocates to um, use <coughs> those, the, um, their Portsmouth 400th tagline, as well as the name of the advocates, because they are going to be <coughs> the ones who are going to be vetting the research that residents uh, can do to, in order to um, order one of these. Um, Plus, I just I just simply didn't get that yeah. far. So um, I, I would like to speak um, uh, concerning this. Um, what you have just passed around is fully acceptable to me, but I feel that especially um, since we're you know, in eight months from now, it won't be the 400th anniversary. I, I'm just thinking that these signs are going to last for 30 years. Hopefully that's high density particle board. <laughs> um, uh, it's, well, cedar. it's red cedar. That's cedar, okay, actually. very good. So um, these signs are going to last a long time. And my personal opinion is there's way too much text on here. 
I'm sorry that history lights our way and the Portsmouth advocates and you know, that's my opinion. I understand. May <clears throat> I address your concern for a second? Um, a couple of folks on our committee, well, we're getting the help of the Portsmouth, New Hampshire 400th folks and they have put forward the idea or offered to, um, they have a sponsor who would like to help underwrite some of the cost of fabricating these. We do understand that it's already April. There are only, um, you know, eight more months left in the calendar year, but we are hoping that AF and to continue this program into the future and those after this year will not have the Portsmouth 400 um, tagline on the bottom. It will most likely just say Portsmouth Advocates. And um, so that's really only for the remainder of this calendar year. And then moving forward, they will not have that any longer. So I've spoken on, out of turn. Uh, would anybody else like to? Um, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll see. Um, yes. I think these are wonderful. Um, you know what I mean? I'm obviously, you know, we're very happy to celebrate our history and very excited about the 400th this year. Um, I, I am going to have to agree with the chair a little bit. This, the bottom does seem like it's going to be like an advertisement. Um, you know, it's putting some a, a group's name on all these buildings all over the place. I know that you guys are doing these plaques, but if someone else we want to do that, you know, then um, like the historical formation. I am very supportive of, but just the names of a, um, of an organization on that, I don't know if I would be as supportive. Understood. Um, in the past, um, just <laughs> the name of the Portsmouth Advocates was along mm -hmm. the bottom because, again, um, you know, we feel responsible for providing accurate historical information, and we are we're joining with them. Mm -hmm. to do the vetting of the resident's research. So it's it's almost a way to... We, we want to give you credit, but I just, I don't know if putting credit on every single one is appropriate, you know, for the, because um, we want to celebrate the history. I agree. Um, but yeah, that's just, yeah. Sorry. Okay, anybody else? <clears throat> I guess I would just say that the uh, the dates, uh, the 2023, and I understand why it's there, but it does make them dated, unlike this one, which is just designating the owner of the house. The 23 is going to look old in 28. Also agree. Um, the offer of sort of underwriting the fabrication of them is really kind of contingent upon having those, that wording and the dates. Uh, so, I mean, that's yes, why Martin. it's there. I can support this. So they, they are initiating this. They, they do great work. They do, you know, there's, this is their, and it's so small, you're not gonna see it till you walk up to it. So I have no problem right, with right. it. We're it, hoping balance, it actually balance out the sign, I think, so. I, I agree with Martin. I, I think it. Uh, I think that it. Um, it marks a moment in history, and the moment a house is built or a, a tree is planted, it marks a moment in time, and it would differentiate from, you know, another time. It, it would. People would look back and, and know exactly when that plaque had been put on, and I'm not sure. We don't usually have control over what some. It says on a sign we have control over the shape and so on. Nick, what do you think about it? Do we have control over the sign? Or? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it's different in this case. Um, it's over the whole district. Yeah, this is, this is a little different than just an individual sign. So I, I, think, I think it's worth making a decision and giving a recommendation back to the applicant. Mr. Chairman, may yeah. I say that uh, I'm proud of the commission for having this level of concern over things. Uh, two things that come to my mind is it's not 
any way protected speech or anything, um, and and it doesn't say Coca Cola on it. So I mean, there, there, there's much of that that I think is relatively understood. And if there was a, a spiritual connection, they are certainly kindred spirits of the historic district commissions. Um, but at the same time, I, I I'm really enjoying the spirited conversation. I really don't know how to even think about this. Go. Um, and I'm clear from my concern. It, it's you know. I, I, I'm glad it isn't, doesn't say Coca-Cola, and Portsmouth Advocates have been wonderful. My only concern is that if the, uh, the historical society, you know, came and wanted to do their own signs, and then another historical group wanted to do it, that's my only concern. But if it's not a concern of this board, then I will not get in that way. Well, just as an aside, the, the Portsmouth Advocates is actually sort of a, a committee under the aegis of the historical society. Okay. Just... Yeah, 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 and and to be honest, we've gotten very good feedback, um, both on the ship design as well as the the history lights our way from residents. But I understand. Yeah, yeah, I'm, it's it's I'm kind of thinking out loud here. Is I, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mr. Chairman, may I say that uh, at the moment I'm thinking that the appropriate way of looking at this thing is by allowing them to put whatever text they want, they can secure a fair amount of funding which will allow the, the possibility of more of these signs being placed on our historic buildings than not. And I think on the basis of that, I have now decided. I, I, I think I'm accepting of their text as proposed. And yes, sir, that, and was, that was, excuse me, sorry, that, that was one of our goals to make because um, I think it was a barrier in the I'm past. I'm assuming that there's also a chance that you would donate these to some members of the commission that lived in the historic district. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. So they do Maybe we can talk later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we, you know, I think this was proposed for um, sort of as a pilot program just for the South End in the past. And we really do want to take this citywide. I have a representative here from the citywide neighborhood committee with, with me who's on our who's on our group and um, and we are really trying to keep the costs down as much as possible to as you said to hopefully make it more accessible for for all the folks in the city. Do you have an estimate of cost? Uh, <laughs> I think it's it's difficult to say at this point, unfortunately, um, with it's a fundraiser. the under, no, it's really not a, <laughs> it's, not it's a really almost not a fundraiser. Um, there are a lot of folks who are on board because they feel strongly that this would be a wonderful program. A lot of people are donating their time, mm. their expertise, um, and so forth. I, it will probably, if I had to guess, be upwards of a hundred dollars. That's great. Um, yeah, but that's again, great. we're trying to Understood. keep it down. Uh, while at the same time, we are trying to offer a superior product. It is history like uh, five quarter cedar. It's hand painted. There is no vinyl lettering, etc. Yeah. History lights our way. Is that um, from the 400? Yes, sir. Yeah, and again, we got we got very good feedback from that particular line. But okay. you know, folks, if, you know, it's subjective, I guess. I think we've gone over it. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, against. Nay. So stay right there. Uh, oh, me again? Okay. You're up. I'll have to get some more supporting documents. Hold on. Okay. Oh, okay. So 303 Pleasant Street, which is Mary's house, uh, is the next item. And this was the uh, request to remove and replace the rear stairs along Washington Street. I think there were some questions about how the bulkhead uh, access was going to. Also, as yeah. far as railings go. Right. Correct, and yes, and I apologize for not being able to attend um, last month's meeting in March. Um, and I'm wondering if you all have in front of you the renderings that do show. Which? 
It was not those. It was really? emailed to us. Oh, th this was today. Yeah, Isaac emailed them to us today. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'll try and that's fish that That's my fault. Out. No, that's fine. You guys fault. all have it. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I mean, so yeah. start and I'll look for it. Mine. Okay. <laughs> I just want to know if they have. It. We um, might. I would find it probably easier to answer questions, but I'll I'll try to get started. Um, you know, these the stairs, as previously stated are in a very bad state of of disrepair really um they're exposed to the weather they've they've had moisture problems uh they are not original to the building i'm not sure how they are attached to the building um so we are just trying to replace as much in kind as possible while also, you know, uh, building up the structure. The, the issue seems to be the con a concern about the steps actually going down into the basement from grade level. Uh, so I, and okay, so yes, and there's like a wooden hatch or I guess a cover um, covering up that space right now. Uh, we don't think that the actual, let's call it a well space is going to get that much larger than it is right now. It may have to grow by even if it grew by about two feet in length, I think it would maintain the same depth, really. And so we are really trying to um, main, sort of maintain the look that is there and hope to just replace the somewhat smaller hatch door not even really a door it's a cover I guess with a, a slightly larger one um, I, I provided these renderings that have the railings on the two sides because uh, that was my understanding that you kind of wanted to see that in case the inspection department said to us look you know this is not gonna work you have to have railings um, I think I agree with Mr. Adams that it looks odd at the very least. Um, so we're trying to avoid that um, and hope to put again another, just another cover on it. We for probably 10 years have been trying to figure out a way to improve the, these stairs the, the health of the stairs um, we thought about you know just having the stairs going up to the back <coughs> door and then maybe having another one going off to the side putting something else around another side of the building like a regular bulkhead but those options really never were appealing they seem to cause more issues than not then solve issues. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, I have a question. Yes. So you are planning to put back on a cover? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. I think one of the concerns we had last time was that it, was, it looked as though it was just going to be a giant hole. Understood. Out there. I completely so understood. It, um, it that like makes me feel a lot better that there's going to be some sort of cover. Oh, definitely. Um, one of the major issues in the past, of course, was that it, this space, when it was uncovered, acted like a nice waterfall sure, sure. to have um, stuff in there. The, the uh, contractor is going to put a drain at the bottom as well um, and there will definitely be cover. We very rarely use this 
uh, door and stairs and door to access the basement. Mm -hmm. um, so it would, it would remain covered most of the time. And the cover would be similar to what we see, just a... Yeah, I think that's attractive. I think, it yeah, is, it is a great. tongue and groove thing. It, it's a very low profile. Mm -hmm. You can still, you know, there's a, there's a window in that batten door. Mm -hmm. um, it, it provides some light into the basement. You know, and there is a landing in that vestibule that's kind of under the stairs. And again, another step down into the basement. So I think the amount of rise and run that, that um, need to be attained with the new construction will still allow for just a, one of those uh, cover like yeah. that. Okay. We really like I was going to say, I mean, look, for me, that's fine if, you know, you're just going to do a new one, basically the same design as what we see, then I'm fine with it. And I wouldn't think that you would need railings if that's the case, so. I also hope not, um, but I think, you know, we'll work with the inspection department sure. and and hopefully try to achieve that. There it is. Yep. Yeah, finally. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions, comments? This is, okay, administrative approval is pretty. All right, um, I'd like a motion then on this. Motion to approve as presented. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, you have right. your approval. Very good, thank you so much. Yep, good luck. <coughs> All right. All righty. Going back to um, 138 Gate Street. So I see Ann is in the back. Uh, this was before us several months ago, and I think what's being requested is, uh, again, to relocate the... Uh, the three windows or two of them there over to the left where there excuse was some. Me. Yeah. I'm sorry, excuse oh, me. Sorry. Can so I the sign. She wants the sign. Or the sign back. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, so what's here is a request again to shift the, uh, the right side windows. And I think the issue that we were grappling with last time was the impact on the, the frame of the structure. So, and if you have anything else to add to that, Um, yeah, um, we haven't done the demolition inside yet, but but shifting that the 40 inches, you know, gives a much better corner feel, and I feel like that is probably sufficient. If we have to get into the upper edge of something, we can resupport it. But we're having to order the kitchen like eight months ahead, <laughs> so we're really trying to nail this down. And the other change was in the small addition. We made some changes to the half bath to add a washer dryer, so the location of that window had to shift into the bathroom from the mudroom. So it's just a small location change there. <clears throat> so that's it. Any questions? Questions, comments? I think it makes it look a little more symmetrical. I kind of like it. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> we don't need to vote. We can just keep going, right? Yeah. We don't keep going. Oh, I'm very sorry. That. Yeah. Do you have any questions about it, though, David? No. Okay. I'm good. Right. Sorry. Okay. We good? Mm. Yep. All right. So 48 Manning Street. Mm -hmm. There are a whole host of requests here. Many of them are uh, exempt from review, but the applicant put a the whole raft of them in here just to I think get everybody up to speed on what's requested um, the primary request for the administrative approval is to remove the existing fence uh, along the street edge uh, remove the garden structures the couple of pergolas remove a skylight that's on the rear portion uh, rear roof surface of the gambrel remove and replace a terminal uh, vent that's um, on the back of the structure and do some drainage work, which really isn't before us, but that's the primary reason the fence is coming down initially. And I think in talking to the applicant, they're evaluating a new fencing option that they'll come back with when they're ready. Um, what else have I missed? Let me see, here's the list. <clears throat> the metal uh, 
Oh, the storm windows, which is an exempt activity. They're going to take the aluminum storms off and replace them with wood storms. Yeah. Um, and they are doing some gutter work. Uh, and the mechanical. So the mechanicals are on the uh, left-hand side of the house. It's not really clear where they're going to be located and whether they're screened, so I'm guessing that will likely need to come back to be clarified exactly where they're going to sit, how many there are, and what what if any screening is is provided they may also need to go to the board of adjustment unfortunately yeah to put them in that location so there'll be time to come back here and clarify that um future installation of a wood cedar roof that that's fantastic i didn't see that the first time um and a new kitchen hood stove vent so is the applicant here yeah, yeah. perfect <clears throat> My name is Jim Labadier, my wife Janet. We just bought 48 Manning Street, and we, uh, we've been restoring antique houses for 35 years. Had a business called Fine Period Homes down in Marblehead. We do really extensive restoration work. We're preservation people, really. We do it for ourselves. It's not my primary business. Um, I, wa I want to share something with you just so you can pass it around real quick. Marblehead. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it Marblehead or Marblehead? Yeah, um, we started restoring houses back in the in the eighties, <clears throat> and um, so we bought Buzzy Dodge's house, which is a, a wonderful piece of property. We're going to do for ourselves. Um, so, was there anything in particular that? I can answer now because I do have pictures of um, how I would uh, put fencing around any air conditioning. I have several houses that I've done in Marblehead. I can even show you um, how we fence off air conditioners. I think that'd be great if you had a, a screening yep. image there. Yeah, sure. This is the location shown on the screen, right? Yeah, it's probably going to be tucked more into those trees, in behind the trees. I'll show you a couple examples. So further from the building than, than not back here? But yeah. Further. I mean, it's, I can't give you the exact location because I think we're going to have to dig a trench to get, you know, the HVAC um, condensing lines underground. Yep. I want to try to get them away from that little alleyway because that's in between the two houses. And I want to try to get them further into the yard, maybe behind tucked in there, yeah. And then we would um, I'll give you an example of all the different types of houses I've done in Marblehead where we hit all the air conditioning and just start. Yeah. Just start at the end there. Okay. So you just start here, you'll see like, everything's hidden in the back. Oh, yeah, nice. John? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was this looking at? No. <laughs> It did show you working. You were carrying an aluminum chair. That was me. <laughs> uh, it seems that everything that you're asking for is pretty cut and dried at this yeah. point. I assume you'll be coming back. One thing that is interesting when you look at these, this old photo from 1870 or 80 yeah. with the uh, watering trough and that pump. Right. And I've seen pictures with this guy, Cappy, somebody, Cappy Stewart, who who apparently took this and sold it. As oh, really? As he was very good at. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, at that time period, you had a much different uh, entry. You didn't have a, a pediment. You had a flat with a okay. uh, awning light over the door. Is that something you plan to go back to? I don't plan on doing anything that Buzzy Dodge put in back in the 70s. I mean, as far as like changing the aesthetics of the outside of the house at this point. Okay. As we get into it further, and I study the house a little more, I may figure out what exactly what um, the reasons why what's there today is there. I don't. Mm -hmm. I take these projects pretty slowly, and um, I think the exterior looks fine. Normally, what I'll do, like you see in that book, I I normally do period windows. I have 
bench made windows made by architectural components. We use Benheim glass. We you know we do all usually do all the complete exteriors, but I don't want to get into the um, that with this house. Um, we're going to keep the windows that are in there today. There's some 19th century windows. There's some 1920s windows, but they all you know from what. They were, you know, Buzzy Dodge did back then. Um, I think it looks fine. We just, we are going to paint the house. We're going to maybe put a wood roof on the house eventually. Um, the reason why we want to take the fence down <coughs> is mainly because we, we want to get rid of the drainage issue that's in the front today. There's a little water coming in, to, seeping into the foundation. I have people rebuilding the entire foundation on the inside right now. I can't stop the water until we get a small drainage in the front, and it's kind of, it's very minor. Um, we just need to get a small backhoe in there, a mini, just so we can dig a trench across the front, put membrane in, stone, pipes, and then I've never had gutters and downspouts on any historic houses I've ever done. We usually take them off. We usually let the water drain where it's supposed to go, and we let it, we flow it out away from the house. Um, this one has gutters and downspouts as we get into this project. I want to see if we, it's even needed once I put the proper pitch and drainage in. Um, a question I have is um, I'm like 50-50 on the fence. Like whether I, I want to know from the board, uh, are, are you leaning towards wanting to have a fence or not have a fence because I would be perfectly happy with a very clean front, you know, the house with nothing. And I, I, brought, I had some pictures showing the house in the 1800s with no fence, and then I have another one with a fence. And I just want to make sure that if I take the fence down, um, then I'll draw up a nice period correct fence for it, but, and we'll build it. But I'd, I would rather have nothing. Um, so. so that photograph, I believe, is the advocate's photo so it's probably early 80s which we're almost in the historic period right. yeah. <laughs> but um 1980s 1980s when it's 50 that, years well, it's old it's sobering when she says it that that's way no it isn't it <clears throat> um, the photo that's on here right now yep so was that a wood roof then yeah that's a wood roof yeah. it's been removed subsequent to the advocates yeah wow sadly that's too bad <clears throat> so here's your more historic photo I, and I'll just, if that's your question, I'll just say I don't have a preference either way. I, I, think it's I like, I mean, you look at Strawberry Bank, right? You look at all the period houses that are there. You don't see fences in the front of the house, right? And typically, I don't know when that fence was put on. Um, it looks pretty early on. And there's other pictures with fences, but there's also photographs without fences. Hmm. What it was like in 1730. Probably had nothing. Who knows? That house wasn't there in 1730. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, sure, any time. I live just around the corner. Um, uh, yeah. In terms of fencing, reality, if you're a period person, is that in the late 18th century, formal houses had formal sections of fencing in front of their building, very balanced uh, and right. usually no larger than the building itself. Right. Um, in the, the mid-1800s, 1845 or so, in the period of this house, a lot of fencing became kind of bland and, and, and capped board type fencing, and that was run somewhat indiscriminately around whole properties. Um, and, and since then, fencing has gone in every direction, uh, picket fences and the rest of that. Um, I would say, as far as the commission, we've never held anyone to a moment in time for their fencing because so many buildings have had so many different kinds of fences. Right. Um, but uh, I, 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 just so you know, I happen to live in the first period, so I've been like studying first period homes for almost 30 years. So I don't see a lot of fences in the periods of the type of houses that I'm used to. So I don't, you know, you talk about federal period, I understand it's plenty of federal fences in Newburyport all through, you know, oh, sure. around here as well. <coughs> this house, um, you know, it's a combination of many different periods, and there's a first period element of it that we opened up 
that I don't know how much how many people have seen, but it's it, there's a very early structure inside that house. Um, you say it wasn't here in 1730. Um, you must have some solid knowledge of that. Oh, this when it was first built was a cape on Manning Street, and uh, was basically extended back by the addition of the center chimney and the gambrel built around it. Yeah. And then some pieces of that, it was framed up in, in chestnut oak. And can I say, uh, you can't cut through that stuff. Can you well, explain you to me? A nail into it Go either. back to the, uh, the cape. Yeah. It, it was built as a cape. Yeah, and the, the whole left end, what you think of as the left-hand side as you're looking at it from the street, okay. uh, of the house was added on uh, 1835, 1840, as I recall. It was Not actually that I was there, built as a <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It anyway, so it's an interesting house. It's got many different features. I think that's why um, the the peaked pediment is on the doorway, that what we think of as a ceremonial, ceremonial front door of the house, yeah. which is where the staircase is. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of the house has been interpreted as a Georgian house rather than a, a 19th century house uh, because that's it's good. in actually two parts. Yeah. And, and sort of trying to be true to one theme throughout the building, it, some parts of it got a little earlyed up. <laughs> I like that term. Um, so besides, uh, could we take out the HVAC equipment and then could we move on then, Nick, because this is... Well, I think if, if the HVAC, I'm just going to take yeah. a stab at that. If the mechanical equipment is going to be located back in those yes. arborvitaes. In the back? Back here. Now you won't, when you, you will not see him when I'm done with it, and you'll well, you'll see either fencing of some period. Would you do type. a screen like the yellow exactly house in there? Exactly, the yellow house there. Yeah. Yeah. there. There was a board on board yeah. screen, and then there That's was normally a. That's normally what I do. Yeah. Uh, there's probably yeah. enough there to yeah. proceed. Better. Okay. Sounds Better great location. to me. I'll, I'll use that image. Just, it's. All right. Do you want yeah. to see it again? or? Well, let's <laughs> just make that a stipulation. Could you pass right. the stuff yeah. back? Should you the. <clears throat> We're keeping the book, too, by the way. Yeah, it's got <laughs> evidence, right? <laughs> evidence. <laughs> so I'm thinking this one. Yeah, you can keep that. Yeah. The, the, something sure. similar to that. Yeah, it's good evidence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you very much for no problem. And, uh, thank you for your explanations. And congratulations. Mm -hmm. it's a, Thanks for coming to Portsmouth. Yeah, that's yeah. a real piece of history. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, where do you go from there? Where are we? Uh, you guys voted on that? No, no, no. no, no. This is gonna okay, we'll keep yeah, going. Okay, there. sorry. 93 Pleasant Street. He's as bad as I am. Right? Yeah, well, wood roof, we don't see that very often. Mm. Uh, okay. Mm. Heck, 93 Pleasant. This is two pieces. I see Tracy Kozak in the audience. Uh, I don't know if you're here for this or not, Tracy, but the first request is for acceptance of the wall um, deconstruction plan and eventual reconstruction. And then the second half of the request, I think, is to switch up the uh, proposed windows for the main house from what you had before to a Pella Architectural Reserve series, something to that effect, because it has the roll roll up screen, so there'd be no screen required on the replacement window at all. Is that good? Okay. Any questions for Tracy? So the the windows that were previously approved were also aluminum clad. They were fiberglass clad wood instead of aluminum clad wood by Colby. Same profile, same shapes. Uh, it's just that it was a fiber fiberglass instead of aluminum, painted the same. Okay. And this is on the mansion? No, this is only the new addition in the back. Oh, the new addition. Okay. The mansion yeah. windows are being was, restored. That's where I got confused. Yeah, Sorry. Um, yeah, we just don't like the look of the screens, so we want them to roll up and disappear. Okay. <laughs> Can I add? Yes. Uh, Tracy, is... Is the finished grade at the top of the wall at the, at the same height as the top of the wall? Um, it's within four or inches. five inches or so. Is there going to be any concern with uh, code drop off? You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. So in the proposed landscape plan, there was a fence, and in fact, um, per HTC recommendation, we moved the fence 
we had it originally on top of the wall. We, we are now putting it right in back of the wall so that we don't um, impact or damage the wall. Great. So if you look at the screen, it, it's approximately here. The fence location will be here. Yeah, yeah. right back there. And that's, that's the um, south end of the wall. And the north end has a planted hedge, hedge yeah. row of boxwoods. Is there any way to push it away from the wall more towards the building? Even further back. Yeah. So that is less of a, yeah. of a component yeah. that one would think is part of the wall? Yeah, sure. It is there. There's a egress walkway at that south end of the wall from a fire exit. Uh, out to grade, so we just have to make sure we keep room for that proper egress width, and we have some leeway to scooch it back if need be a little bit. So you could maybe shift the of fence course. to the edge of the walkway rather than the edge of the wall. Sure. Right? Wouldn't that be appropriate? Closer. Have it on the edge of the walkway rather than the edge of the wall. That I think that would be a better approach. Okay. That's just one voice here. No, I would agree also. And, and if you look at the concrete, the angle of the concrete, one, one foot to four feet, um, you know, if the, if the posts are down uh, two feet, then it's going to have to be eight inches over or something. You know, it's going to, it, it, it's, the posts are going to hit the concrete unless you move it anyway. So it's That's an excellent point. Okay. May I, may I ask, Mr. Chairman, uh, architect question? Uh, how, how, how level? Are we, I, yeah, one a friendly one. Excuse me, um, but no, you made the comment about moving the railing to the walkway. How much of a requirement does the applicant have to build a fence on top of the wall if no one walks there, other than maybe the guy mowing the lawn? That's a good point. It's like a it's like a roof drop off, right? But yeah. if there's no the walkway, if, there would be a hazard. If there's a walkway, you need in a public access, then you're getting into public safety, and you would have to to deal with that. But if this is semi-private or private, different story. Cool. Well, Do you yeah, agree? We and maybe we can look at I look at doing the hedge. The whole way instead of a fence. Yeah, even better. Even better. That would be even better. Be even better. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We just so, don't want people falling off. I'm worried about the commission telling you that you shouldn't worry about people falling off if it's yeah. not our purview to so, do yeah. that. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, I agree. Also, because um, somebody mowing could have a problem, and uh, yes, they're working out on a, a building or. And um, so we have to put fences around uh, HVAC units up on a roof, and that's because somebody's going to work on that unit, and they could fall. So uh, I'm afraid that um, you know that this really shouldn't be lawn or something like that. Myself. Well, right now it's a fence. But it's or not a up hedge, to us, right? <laughs> fence or a hedge on the edge of the walkway. Yeah. yeah. I think anything that sort of keeps the wall. Independent, I think, mm -hmm. is, is goes a long way to giving it to what it was uh, before. It, it almost sense a freestanding wall. Should we make the stipulation that the fence, if you, if used by the project, should be along the walkway, yeah. but or not, or a hedge, or well, and and a hedge. I mean, there's going to be a hedge there too, so. I mean, that's what they're planning. All the way up? Well, no. Currently, the hedge is halfway, yeah. and so the fence is one of the, the other whole halfway. Way if, if it can substitute for the fence. Yeah. I think a hedge being halfway is fine. It's just the fence that seems to be a little bit, might be more visually. Yeah. So I'd be, I'm, I'm fine with the, I don't know if I have a better, yeah. this is just me. I'm fine with the hedge being midway, and then if you choose to use the fence, it's along the walkway. Okay. So. Looks like a good project. Great. Not easy. Thank you. Any other questions? Great. That's it. Okay. Keep going, Nick. Okay. 45 Market Street. This is a request to Shannon here. No. Uh, request to modify the doors, uh, the entryway doors on Market Street, which I think were originally approved to be clear 
and they'd like to do a three-quarter on, on the left. So the approved version is on the screen on the left over here, two clear doors, full. Then a three-quarter is what they're proposing on the storefront into the commercial space, and a solid door is proposed on the residential access to the right. So, have at it. Nobody here, right? Sounds good to me. Yeah, fine. I, I have to say, Mr. Chairman, that I, I, I walked the street and did a bit of a survey of, of, of buildings on that side and, and found probably the most consistent line was that, that uh, the glazed doors and solid doors mimicking each other, only one just having solid panel, was uh, probably the best flushed out example of what I saw on the other side. And this certainly looks like that. <coughs> Okay, Any, anybody else? No. Okay, let's do the last one, 237 Islington Street. I believe this is the last unit in the building that does not have an awning window on Islington Street. So you don't see it in the image here. Uh, this is the unit where they'd like the awning window on the second floor. I'll try and pull up uh, a street view of what's there today. Uh, Isaac also sent in the oh, email today the email. A example of the audio window <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> i was just going to show anybody that's interested what i think isaac sent <clears throat> this is it here it's so these are the awning windows a couple open here yep. Mm. Yep. here's another one down here so i can't imagine there's any issues the window is the same manufacturer as what other people have put in i'm not sure when the others were put in i haven't looked any issues with that? No. Okay. So that I think that's the can list, I, right? Did I miss any? Can I move that we approve uh, the two, three, four, five, seven, seven eight, and nine? Um, and there are a few stipulations in there, but oh wait, I didn't do Bowl, oh Bowl Street. I didn't do it. Um, sorry, which is nine. Oh. And that's only been added to the agenda because it was approved last month as I think one twenty three Bow Street, and it's supposed to be one twenty one. It's in the same building. It's oh. just a okay. different address. So, so we figured we'd nine. redo it. Okay, fine. That's it. So right. now you can add nine. All right. Nine. Nine. <laughs> second. 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 Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. <coughs> so moving right along to work right. sessions, we'll old go, business. We'll go down then, yep. Two yeah. work sessions. We'll have to go to the table. Oh, yeah, we have to go down. Okay. We had a request to do these in reverse order this week. Certainly. From the applicant. So which one are we doing first? We're doing the two work sessions. Oh, okay, first? Down there. Called Jones. Yeah, but um, yeah. I was going to just show it to everybody else. Which is kind of I have a, uh, I have the okay. picture. Oh, okay. It was just kind of fun to see it uh, before. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think it's right <laughs> All that stuff. <laughs> I think next to you. You can. What about the picture from the 80s yeah. or 90s? Or? Well, the, uh, the. Third from the corner. Yeah. Oh. Welcome. There you go. Thank you for having me back. Hi, mom and dad. Oh, okay. yeah. They're watching. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hi, mom and dad. They're very proud. <laughs> it doesn't really And they all thought that you treated me quite well the last time. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's been an off week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
keep those cards and letters coming in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I haven't started. And so you can actually see in the photo that the addition on the back of the house was there whenever this photo was taken, which predates when I originally thought it. Hmm. Does anyone know when when those photos came out, okay, when that book came out? So, I, you know, between the 10s and like 20s. All right, okay. I have to get this thing started, and then uh, it'll be a work session. Requested by Christopher Daniel Freund, owner. Is that close enough? That is uh, exactly right, yeah. All right, for property located at 37 Prospect Street, wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure. Add separate first and second floor additions as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on Assessor Map 141 as Lot 16, lies within the general residence A and historic districts. All right. Introduce yourself again. Uh, I'm Dan Freund. Um, uh, Christopher is my first name, but my friends call me Dan. Uh, and yeah, uh, many of you came out to the property after the first work session to inspect, and I also included this time uh, with my new materials uh, aerial shots of the structure. Um, so. Uh, I'm excited to continue moving this project along and to get to the point where I can actually begin. Did you make any changes from when you, uh, you could just give us an overview? So uh, the, uh, the changes were in, uh, in particular in style of the entrance to the barn. Uh, and to review for, uh, for definitions, I'll refer to the carport, the garage extension, and the barn, and then the mudroom in between the two structures. Uh, so the entrance would be at the point where the uh, garage extension begins uh, to offer, you know, um, it, it seems to be... Uh, the, the type of entrance that I would like into that space. Um, the, um, the changes uh, to the uh, back of the house are uh, rather than two center doors, I have been attracted to a uh, split sliding door uh, that uh, opens at the center with four panels. Um, and have included an alternative option uh, with a French door style as well, uh, although I prefer the sliding doors because uh, in order to uh, maximize space and limit uh, door swing. Um, the, I don't know if we had the standing seam metal roof in the original uh, submission and uh, uh, the um, two variations on the shed dormer, one where the shed dormer is on the new construction over what is the garage extension, uh, and the preferred uh, version, which would encompass roughly a third of the existing barn with the shed dormer, as well as the new construction. Um, other than that, uh, the um, um, one minor uh, uh, change on the front elevation, the side door, which uh, the existing door is just really terrible. It's an old steel door and it doesn't feel right. And so I don't know if this is the right time to propose a door in similar style to what I have selected uh, for the, uh, the barn entrance, which would be a three quarter glass door. That's a good overview. Questions, comments? <clears throat> Should we start with the right, Dan? Have you got anything? Um, <clears throat> I think this solves a lot of the problems we were worried about with drainage and everything. And I think it, it uh, um, roof lines and, and, and gives you expansion. I'm not sure 
I'll pass on the, to the experts on doors and windows. But uh, I may like I, the general design. May I point out one other uh, consideration, and I don't know if it comes out in this. Uh, the carport I would like to pull back just about a foot, just to reveal the corner of the house. Uh, and and I you know distinguish the carport from the the house. Oh, that's great. It's still there. Yeah. Are you going to rebuild that carport in any way? Uh, that's my intention. Yeah. Yes. Are you going to make an effort to accent the posts or to give it some some look that's more appropriate to your house? I would like to uh, uh, make them in a, a post and beam fashion with uh, mortise tenons uh, and and uh, because right now I think there are three there are four there would be four three posts in that open section yeah. the carport section uh, and I think that would be uh, in in style I wanted to uh, bring that into the construction style as much as possible, whether it is structural or it is an aesthetic appeal. Um, but yes, that's very much uh, in mind for me. It would be both, I would think, you know, structural yeah, and aesthetic. Yeah. I mean, those little four by fours, they look awful spindly when they're sticking I eight agree. feet high. Yeah. And... Yeah. Your phone is no. a foot which way? Uh, a foot back, just okay. so that the, because right now it comes right to the front yeah. facade. Okay, that's good. I think that's a great idea. Um, no, I think this is all, these are all great propo proposed designs. Um, having the dormer, I know that the, what you're saying that I'm looking at option A on A2.2, um, Nick, but uh, it just worries me a little bit about taking off the, that corner of the roof line, of the original roof beam, um, and extending that forward. I, I'm sure it's fine, but that's the only concern I have just because then that's, that's something that you can't really reverse if you wanted to in the future, so you kind of lose that history of the corner of the um, barn, although I suppose it will still, you'll still see from the other side the original um, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be taking out that structural uh, um, rafter okay uh, there are four bents yep. uh, in the structure uh, and I wouldn't be removing that okay. from the structure so it would be visible inside the structure oh, okay. and that that uh, rafter is actually partly damaged it looks like there was a um, uh, a brace that had ripped out mm -hmm. uh, so there's some minor damage okay. to that okay well um, that's great if it still stays there then I don't have a yeah no I I don't um, I, I like the way it looks yeah. mm -hmm. um, no I think there's I mean I think all of these options are are great I think that the mud room is going to be a really nice addition there and just make everything more cohesive and mm. look like it makes sense so yeah. Barbara, you want to go? No, I'm going to pass for the moment. Thank you. Uh, Karen? Actually, I'd like to pass too. I'm still okay. trying to figure it all out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I'm, I guess on our tour, our site walk, I was struck by a couple of things. One was the level of completeness that I felt in that small barn. Uh, and and uh, I was sort of struck by how how few of them there are left that are in any kind of shape at all. And, and so making and changes to it kind of sets me off a little bit. Uh, I saw the dormer being constructed on the roof, and I know that that means purlins are going and, and things like that. Uh, I, I, it, it doesn't warm me. Uh, it, the extent, and then I'm bothered by the, the fact that the building already has, we'll just say that the building's in, at the moment, seven parts. Um, the house, the side shed, the rear addition, the infill addition on the back, the lean-to uh, carport, the garage extension, and then the barn itself. And it just seems like there's too much there now. Uh, and 
And I'm not really a fan of carports. I don't think that's a period correct carport. Uh, it, it even at best, it's got a. No matter how you build it, it's going to be very cottagey or, or agricultural in its effect. It, it doesn't look like an urban thing to have happened on an 18th century house. I'm not warming up to this. Okay, Rick. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Daniel, for bringing this to us. But I, I, I can agree with these changes. Um, I can support these changes. I think you can still see the historical house. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a supporter of these. Anybody else? I, I think David raised some of my concerns um, ab about this. Um, and he raised my exact concerns. Okay. But yeah. I don't have anything to add. Uh, David, I have a question for you. Uh, what period would you say that this bar is? Would you? Well, I, I think it's a. Uh, Right around the time of the revolution, uh, certainly before the federal period, so I guess it would make it Georgian. Yeah. If it's, is it pre-revolutionary? I'm not certain of that, but uh, I'd need to see more of it. But it's certainly not a uh, 19th century barn. Are the uh, sheathing boards on the roof? Are they going? Yes, it's, it's exactly all classic purlins, common uh, main rafters, um, uh, shaped corner posts. The thing that throws me a little bit is the ceiling, the mow of the barn. It's a small barn. Okay. But the the, the the attic floor, we'll call it. Okay. Is made of very heavy timbers, sort of like you see in some early nineteenth century buildings where they made floor joists, big square things. Whereas in I'm sure you know this, uh, in pre revolutionary <laughs> buildings it's it's not uncommon to see large beams, but the joists frequently are very small pieces. This is not that way. So either that or it was built for heavy load, which it is another been thing like we a don't blacksmith have. shop or some place where the guy might have had a chain fall or or, or was storing heavy things up there above overhead. Uh, somebody that had a uh, a, a farm in uh, Newington and brought their apple cider there and stored it upstairs. I, I, I really don't know. Alrighty. My record suggests uh, 1790, uh, but I stole some time with uh, an earlier speaker to try to find out more information about the origins. Yeah, interesting. Um, Karen? Yeah, I, uh, the, the, the carport um, is, is tough for me. I do see it as an agricultural use and at trying to make, make it historic part of the, the newer house. I, I, I struggle with the way it looks, and I, I don't know how that's done to make it fit in. I know you want to keep it, but is I'm struggling this, with it. If it's something that is, he just is, he's not necessarily changing, do we, I mean, we can't ask him to take it off if no. it's there. He is tearing it, taking it off. Was tying into the, the new building, too. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I mean, it's a it's I don't know. integral that's my question. Package. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, that's not what's before you, though, it's what right. you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's a good point, Karen. Um, I would just like to say, um, I'm very much in agreement with Mr. Adams. Going to look at it, it was a fascinating structure. You know, it had big wide boards like this on the side of it. And of course, all they did was put their lawnmower in there and stuff like this. They wanted to take it down. And, and uh, so you know, I realize you're not taking it down, but um, you're changing it. Um, so if the, if um, the dormer weren't on it, I would feel a little bit better about it. But um, so if uh, that's, just, that's just my opinion. Uh, are you saying the dormer at all, or the option A with the dormer uh, over the new construction is acceptable? That would be the one. That's it. This option one here would be yeah. okay. better of the two. Um, I mean, that option seems to be the one that might change it the least yeah I mean, and you can explain to us exactly just what would be changing to this structure obviously you're adding a piece to the front of it yes oh. to accommodate stairs right. and a uh, bath right but are you doing anything else to the, the barn structure uh, no okay. uh, um, I very much I 
I love the structure. Yeah. I want to accentuate it. I want to, um, I, I want to make it habitable so that I can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It would be, in my opinion, um, there again, good to have some vertical break between your new structure that is going to be attached to the barn and the, and the old barn. Even if it's just a trim board that's coming down saying, this is the barn, yeah. this is the, my five foot addition. Inside, you, you might never note, you're not going to notice it. You know what I mean? But, um, I, I uh, and I, and I, I, I did plan for that. Uh, in uh -huh. option B, uh -huh. uh, I, I asked uh, my designer to show me what it might look like with vertical barn boards. Uh, just to differentiate it from the existing structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that would be good also. And he did point out he he heard your comment on the site visit as well uh, about having keeping that piece of trim, and so we very much want to delineate that break between the original structure. I think that's very yeah. important. It's yeah, it's in both it's in both drawings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I think yeah. it's smart and. I would be very. I would be also be supportive of a different um, cladding, like you have drawn, yeah. to actually to really differentiate so that the barn mm -hmm. is highlighted as being authentic in its own, and mm -hmm. the new, new and construction. You know that is that uh, raises a mm -hmm. question for me as well, which is the if you look inside, those boards are vertical boards, and uh, at that time period, it was entirely possible that it used uh, vertical cladding on the outside. Um, they might have been, and then they got so badly rotten that they put wood shingles mm. over it, something like that. But it's distinctly different from yeah. the house, which has broad uh, horizontal cladding mm. with a uh, mitered edge. Yeah, And the one thing uh, I would also say as a, a little caveat is that the new addition, of course, will be on footing four feet down into the ground below the frost line, and this barn is sitting on a slab. Um, a bar just by itself, a barn moves, you know, and new construction is not supposed to move. <laughs> so <laughs> if you've got places where you're joining one or you're going to be running kitchen cabinets from the barn into this new addition or anything like that, I'd, I'd just beware. Be careful. Yes, I I, uh, I, okay. I noted that in our uh, our previous as well, and asked a bunch of questions. Okay. Do we have any other comments? Or? Can I just ask a question? Oh. Um, so you have the two dormers. You have one on the on the barn, and and you're willing to lose that one? Uh, that uh, that's entirely within. I mean, if that's what it takes, it to, could still work. To, if you didn't have it, it still one, works. Yeah. One up there, right, right. here, okay. right? Right. Yeah. Uh, could be. Uh, and that that right. still accommodates right uh, the. No, 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 no. Uh, still works no, for you. No, yes. Well, that, that's okay. what he's not going to do. And oh. then that's what he's losing and going yes. over the yeah option B. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the the dormer on the house, is that step down at all? Uh, there's no dormer on the house. The dormer is coming off of the existing. Yes, barn. that's what I mean. Is that step down? Is that step down? Or uh, is it looks like it's the, the roof line way. is the same. It's and, the same. And so I I would likely um, uh, I don't yeah why I don't not? know that the the height would uh, allow you need the height for that. Oh okay yeah. so yeah. so to differentiate dif differentiate between the old house and the but new. that that would be an interior uh, 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 decision um, if, if I'm correct if I'm not mistaken. I think what she's asking is it. Can you lower that uh, dormer ridge height so uh, it's yeah, differentiated so it shows, from right. the old, even if it's only eight or nine yeah. inches or something? Just, just to show the. Well, uh, he has it drawn kind of that way. If you go to two point three, and I don't know if Bob did this intentionally or if it's. Yeah. Like that, but oh, yeah. the the top of that dormer on the right side for option B is. A little below the ridge line. Where am I seeing that? Two point three. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. It Two looks like three. the right the ridge line would continue, but the door. We're not talking right. about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the height of the dormer, the dormer is just below the ridge line. It's, it's uh, so it's drawn different. This one's not drawn right back here. 
Right. Because this is going all the way to the yeah. ridge. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, you'd so want to know one which it? one's right. Yeah. yeah. Which is the right one? Both of them are on here. Yeah. You, you'd want the one that's lower. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And that that works for me. So that one's the wrong one. This is. You still have enough room if you dropped it eight inches. Uh, I, I, this is right. I, I this is right. Okay. Double check. I don't uh, yeah, have that answer right here. Yep. This one is not what he's doing. Mm. This is with the same ridge. Yes. For the addition. No, that would help tell the story of the barn and the addition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah is that, it how is that any different? You'd be from able that? to see the barn no, that, from the that front. Is the barn. You know, it would just you can, can see there's a, a taller oh. structure. Yeah. Than the, this is yeah. option. Uh, and and, and okay. with the, the, the Wait, changes in the here. neighborhood, Maybe. I'm Not very do I'm I'm doing keen this on that. keeping this that one character incorporates the barn. This one's that property, yeah, but it looks like the ridge side is exactly to maintain that. It does. Right. And when you go here, yeah, uh, so I think um, we've heard a lot of our comments and uh, uh, about the barn. There was a few of us, and uh, as far as the dormer on the barn goes, I think and uh, the other uh, comments are primarily about the um, carport. And mm -hmm. so I wish that you and your designer would get together and think about the carport, and you know, have a good plan that we can see and understand what you're going to do um, to make the carport um, have an urban look, um, have an old look on your house, which you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's about where we're at. All right. Well, thank we're you. We're doing pretty well. Thank now. you. Could we also request a couple of uh, floor plans, a foundation plan or something like that? Certainly. He's got that. I, think, I, I didn't see it in no, my packet. No, I didn't packet. see him either. <clears throat> Not there. <clears throat> okay, so we need to continue this. Yep. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. All righty. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Um, so now we're going into another work session. Yep. Mm -hmm. Requested by Sean and Michio. By Dong owners. And I hope I said that correctly. Uh, for property located at 39 Dearborn Street, wherein permission is requested to allow exterior construction to an existing structure, replace existing roofing, add a new side, and entry additions as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 140 as lot 3 lies within general residence A in the historic district. All right, please introduce yourselves and what have we got? Um, I am Amy Dunn. I'm the designer on the project. And this is And Michio. I'm Michio Bardon. Sean Bardon. Um, so you have before you, this is our third work session, so. Um, I actually am presenting um, two options. On the first page, you'll see our, I didn't include the Dutch colonial, but you're going to see sort of our progression. Um, just so you can see that we're um, trying to work with you. So basically, what we have in these two options, version seven and eight, is preserving the CAPE 100%, not we're not planning on touching it, and um, creating a glass connector that is subtle and creates a visual separation between the existing cape and newer, um, new modern living quarters. The goal was to be able to look through the connector visually to see the existing front door, and to see straight through it to the backyard, um, I referenced St. John's Connector um, because I think that is a good example of connecting the old and the new. Um, and um, that connector will have trim work only, just windows and trim work, so no siding. Um, and then the modern living section would take place in a separate structure would, which would house the family room and the primary suite on the second floor. Um, 
we do want to we spent a lot of time uh, we met with Nick on the site talking about mass and so at this point um, the we're we're hitting the minimum living square footage that is acceptable to the Bardongs for their needs as far as a uh, we're fine with on the first floor. It's, it's the second floor that gets a little bit tricky. Um, and so trying to balance that mass with the existing cape. So um, what we, uh, let me just spell out the differences between version seven, which I'm defining as a, and it's probably easier to see on this sheet. Bleh, that one. On the screen. 0.3. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know what happened. There we go. Um, so in version seven, the connector is nine feet seven feet wide. And in version eight, the connector is seven feet seven wide, so it's a little bit wider. Um, the connector in version seven is the existing footprint of the, of the mudroom. And we widened that a little bit more with version seven. Um, and when I title it Cape with Colonial Edition, that, that is an additional 519 square feet. And in version eight, that's a, an additional 565 square feet, both of which are 2.9 feet higher than the existing cape. Um, so I think it's always hard with perspectives and uh, it's almost easier with an elevation to see that exact 2.9 square feet. Um, in my opinion, I think that the, the colonial addition is simpler lines and um, basically stays with the neighborhood of Dearborn being basically all whole slew of tall colonial, tall kind of narrow colonials. Um, and then the Cape Edition replicates the existing Cape with a dormer. Um, and that would have the rake boards applied on the sides. Um, not visible on here. So, um, and then Which do you prefer? What's the the they do prefer version seven. Um, that, it, is that is the colonial. The colonial. Yeah. Thank you. Um, with the wider edition. Yeah. With the wider um, mm -hmm. glass connector. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> okay. Can I, I just wanted to say thank you for the letter that oh, you okay. sent. Um, that was very well written and um, and uh, we appreciate that always so we don't usually get very many heartfelt letters <laughs> so thank you um, and I think this is a really interesting approach that you've decided to take on and it seemed like in our past discussions that that little garage thing was problematic anyway because we you know, weren't sure what it was gonna do and, and how we were gonna use it. So um, I think that this is probably the best of the options that you've kind of gone through because mm -hmm. you're actually, you are preserving the old Cape, which is, um, is a historic structure and um, deserves to be oh, the, your photographs from the inside look it looks beautiful inside I know it's tiny but you know you've got some really nice pieces of that house that um, should be saved so um, this is even though these things can get awkward looking sometimes when you have sort of a new house next to an old house um, it basically you know stepping back sort of looking at this overall it is a nice separation of here's the old house here's our new living space you're not really messing with the old stuff it's clear that this is your modern space so um, I think you know theoretically that works really well I also um, I think agree that the colonial 
option is probably the way to go. I would just like to see, I think maybe that it should be simplified a little bit more. Um, the, and, and these renderings sometimes uh, make things look really busy, but the, the lots of windows on the front um, are a little bit busy. But, um, you know, the, in general, the massing of it and all of that stuff, I realize that's probably the lowest that you can get the roof line with yeah. code and all of that stuff um, to make it buildable. So I think, you know, I commend you for choosing this direction and then getting, you know, the most out of the smallest space that you possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else over here? Yeah. No, I just want to thank them that uh, I think it's <clears throat> been some struggle with what was there and what they need. And I think this is a, a nice thanks for listening. And I think we do preserve the Cape. And I like that option the best, too. Martin, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I think the strategy of kind of leaving the, uh, the historic house alone and having your, you, now you have a couple wings and, and plenty of space. And uh, I, you're backed up into a corner. It would be nice if you could give the, the older house some more breathing room, but it looks like there's limits as to what you can do given the site area. The, you sure you have the proper setbacks from the property line? Is It's that tight? It's that yeah. level. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. We are looking into a um, an easement. At this okay. point, the reason why you're not seeing any windows on the back, because we're only two, three from that back property line, that's fire code. Um, so if we had an easement, we could add windows back there. But okay, you sure. know, yeah, it's like tucked right back in that corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think this is a much better approach. It, it, it sort of distinguishes, even the architecture, it distinguishes itself from the original house. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think they have to be, be of the same, same language. You don't want to have a confusion. Uh, this is your modern wing. This is your historic wing. And uh, yeah, I think it's very supportable. Good. Thank you. Good for the moment. Thank you. All righty. Um, I like both options. I, I could live with either one of them. I do like the congruity of the of the two capes, but if your preference is for the the colonial with the cape, I think um, I think that works well. And I'm glad you're leaving the the old house. So that's great. I'm, thank you very much. I, I, as the rest of the commission, I'm certain you understand. It's uh, highly supportive of your handling the, the old cape. Um, it, it there's a sense of it reemerging now. Uh, I think I agree with Karen as far as the making the new piece a cape also, so that it doesn't seem like it's the same level of towering over the old building. Um, I also find the sort of a modern fenestration is carried a little bit better, I think, by the cape form with the dormer on the top having those extra window, that extra window in it. Uh, and I, I, I think there's a, 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 an implication of scale that the cape, modified cape, has to the old building. This, that and the connector making that contact area very small, I think this is a win. Um, thank you both. Um, my concern, I said before, was that we were losing the story of the history that, you know, it happened here. And this, <clears throat> both options tell the story. The story is clear as day. Um, you're not touching the history. Um, so we can see that. And I, I, so I can only thank you. And, um, yeah, no, I'd be very um, supportive of either the Cape or the Colonial. Either one. Yeah, I would be. Um, I, I did agree with Commissioner uh, Rudig that the the colonial, the colonial has, has a lot of windows on the top, you know what I mean? But I understand, um, you know, maybe if you took out like that, yeah, <coughs> one or two, but um, I, I, would, I would be supportive. Your view, too. Yeah. I think um, it's, a, it's a, you know, not that the board reviews this, but from an interior perspective, what I'm trying to do is get a window in the bathroom, and because we can't have windows on the back, that's the only way that I can get a window in the bathroom is on the front. <laughs> and then I need a wall. So there's, um, 
Oh, yeah. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do think it's fun. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to explain. Yeah, it, um, I, I look forward to the next iteration because I think that the busyness caused by this particular fenestration is probably what's giving me the most concern. Um, but you have other things, other fish to fry and things to find out about maybe in the back and maybe in the front. And so I, I think I'll just let you continue to develop it. Okay. But I, I, think, I, I think that it would be possible for the new building to be um, too distracting and busy compared with the, the Cape. Um, it, it already has enough modern elements. Um, it doesn't need busyness to also define it as new. When you're referring to that, um, are you also referring to like the roof over the door, the the door structure itself, the skylights, all of that? Yeah. 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 I would just say in, in general, mostly I think it's just I'm having difficulty with the way this renders. Like you said, sometimes it, the um, uh, computer generated design has just so much detail that you're lost in shingles and what appears to be coins on the corner but really isn't it's just the way it's, yeah. yeah it's I think it's um, almost easier to look at this well yeah. see can't yeah. do that <laughs> I don't work upside down it apparently yeah. something like that where um, you can actually see the lines but yes mm -hmm. Um, so I'd like to ask a question. Uh, mm -hmm. You are uh, maintaining the historic front door on the Cape. That is, that will stay. Yeah, that yep. is staying. Um, is there any difference between the height of the two uh, versions uh, between the Colonial and the Cape? No. They're both the same. Wow. They're actually the same structure itself. Yeah. Like all I literally did was pull the roof in and then bring it down. So the ridge height stays the same. Wow. Hmm. <clears throat> so much for my using a straight edge, a piece of paper <laughs> for a straight edge. <laughs> um, it's, it's on the... Um, yeah, I, I just would like to yeah. say that I, I am very glad that you uh, are not uh, really digging into the Cape. Um, it is a, a very historic <laughs> structure and has been there a long time. I did a little bit of research um, on some materials that I have, and uh, at one time that was um, Dearborn's uh, tannery. So basically, your part of your yard there, going around the corner, was a, probably a big old wooden structure that was right on the water, and it was a tannery at that time. And in the early 1900s, um, there was a blacksmith shop, but I don't think it had. I think that the blacksmith could possibly have lived in this building and used the little house on Dearborn Street, not on the corner, but the next house. The red one? Huh? The red one? Right no, next it's door? blue. Oh. It's the second house on the right. The first house is a ranch house on the mm -hmm. corner of Dearborn and Maple. Mm -hmm. and it's that next mm -hmm. little, I mean, it's neither here nor there. It's got mm -hmm. nothing to do. So I, I just would like to say that I am glad uh, that you're not really opening up that roof and on the uh, on the Cape and um, uh, all your work is going out here. And um, as far as the uh, busyness, I'm just wondering if um, some of it could be the front door. <laughs> I mean, it's not often that you see two three foot doors with side lights and an awning window over. You know, sometimes you'll see, you know, a, a door with side lights and a door would, but it, then it's a single door. So I'm wondering if that door could be part of the um, busyness that some people are having problems with. But yep. other than that, I'm, I'm happy in the direction that you guys are going. Thank you. Do you have a preference between the two versions? I would say that. Um, it appeared to me that the Colonial was shorter. <laughs> I'm wrong. Um, so I like uh, the Cape okay. version better. Right. Um, Anybody else have any other comments? Oh, 
be expired. That's okay. it. So since we didn't get clobbered down. <laughs> no, no, no. That's good. Everything, no, everything. Um, you know, is so very... we'll move forward um, with yeah. this and um, you know, just talk to you about how to proceed, whether we go do another work session with materials or do you want us to go to a public meeting? So I think you're going to need to choose <coughs> from oh, yes. the colonial and we the cake, sure as it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. you know, well, if there's any indecisiveness on that, you wouldn't want to file for a public hearing. Yeah. It's not about choosing then which one to go with from their side. Yeah. So you could do a work session slash public hearing if you felt like you know you were going to do one of the two, and it was clear tonight there was support okay. for the one you choose. Yep. Then you would come in with the materials, present those, and then go right into a public hearing. Okay. So, John, your support for the K eight doesn't exclude seven, or because I think most of us are allowing the builder no, to choose. No, I'm not excluding either one. Okay, I just yeah. like the the, the oh, yeah. more we'll detail have... that's on the cake. Yeah. Okay. No, I, just, <laughs> I think that's important for them. To know. I, I mean, good luck with the windows. I I just can't. I understand that fire code, as if somebody's going to build a house right there, and downtown I can certainly see it, <clears throat> but in this location. Hmm. Property steps down about five feet from the yellow house that's on Maplewood, so it'd be difficult to. Oh, you're that close? Yeah, they built it right at the drop, so it uh, drops okay. five feet right there. All right. <laughs> so, um, good luck, anyway. I guess a quick question about the skylights. Are those to um, add additional light to the rooms that are in the windows below, or is that light into an attic of some kind? No, there's no space for an attic, so it is to the bedroom. And I don't. And are they are they on the other side? I didn't have yes, a they are in the back. Yeah. Why? I wonder what? if the one if the <laughs> skylights in the front are also what's adding to my visual busyness. I the one just... thing I was going to mention on the scut, we, we kind of tried to mirror the original entrance, and it has side lights and this transom up top, and so we were yeah. trying to copy that thing, and maybe we overdid it a little bit. It, but... It's just that then you've got two really wide doors yeah. no, for the it. whole thing. Um, just as one who's got skylights and the rain that we've been having forever now, in the last couple, I mean, to have those things in a bedroom, <laughs> you're not going to sleep. <laughs> what's, your, what's your setback on the right-hand side? <clears throat> there, we're at five. So why don't you have windows in this? It look, we're it's too close. Five. Why are you too close? Uh, I mean, it looks well, like no, a Paul big blank wall. It. That's well, we also didn't want to impede on our neighbor, Mike, um, next door because, you know. So why don't you put some windows in with a Bahama shutter or something just to break up that yeah. big blank wall yeah. that everyone's okay. going to see sure. on your point. Let me check with Paul and see. For some reason, he you thought we could do it. Five, do it I think if we're five, we're fine. Yeah. yeah. And what's the deal with the sliding door? What's that for? Or what is that? I'm sorry, where? The trying to salvage the door off of the existing shed. It's pretty nice and, and have just an outdoor bike storage there because we don't have a garage. So into the building? Into the building. That would be thought, but. like an interior shed because we would, the they've lost all their storage. There's no other spot to do that without going in there? Not on the, because we're, we're right at FEMA. We can't go close to the water. Yes. We're so completely landlocked, and they need a place the to put situation. the bikes, right? Like I'm afraid it's going to float away on a king tide. <laughs> <laughs> what windows do you have in the gable on the other side that we can't see? Uh, there's one in the... Second floor? Uh, yep. Yep, you can see it on the floor plan only, I believe. Um, one on the gable end looking at back at the cape. So, yeah, because it's under, it's within the gable. Yes, yeah, it's right underneath the gable. Yep, right centered under the yeah, gable. Yeah. yeah, I can see it here. No, I guess you probably can see that we don't like blank walls. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, the uh, yeah. Mr. Fair enough, Mr. Yeah. Cracknell doesn't. You know, you I, do? I, if we can put the windows in, we definitely want I think the reason yeah. is just all understanding of code. So yeah. if we can get yeah. it. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I 
working with a lawyer in town, and I think he reached Colby, out to you. Colby, yeah. Colby reached out to you, so he said to hold off until we cleared HDC on the structure so that we had something definitive to work with our neighbors with. Or neighbor. Well, we could do that, and then uh, if you do decide you want windows, they could come back. They? That isn't related to the easement, though. That's oh, the back oh, of the building, oh, oh. The, the other big blank wall. Mm. Yeah, this so, has two solid blank walls to it. So that would be, um, I figure at some point we're going to have to come back anyway. <coughs> to make modifications. Yeah, that we would either Well, be it able sure to wouldn't be bad to see where the windows w would go. That same thing you're going to take to the, the neighbor. Sure, and, we can show those windows. They either happen or they don't. I mean, we would love windows on that side, right? Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Then your bathroom problem goes away. Mm -hmm. From the grade up to the property uh, property height, the ground level for our neighbor Mike, and then his six foot fence. So that, like the first having windows on the first floor didn't make a lot of sense, but no. on the on the, on the uh, second floor it did. But we were thinking that we were bumping up against rules, so that's why we left them out for the moment. I mean, it probably makes sense to have one on the on the front corner of the building on the side on the first floor. You have your living room, your family room. Chimney there. No, well, not in the corner. That's not where a window would go. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, yes. Um, in the center. Yeah. And we are proposing a chimney. It sounded like. Um, Brick versus stone. I don't think you guys really care, do you? What's that? I think Brick the, versus stone. I think the uh, you had recommended the, the stone veneer. Like I, I think it. If we didn't have stone, or, uh, right now we have brick around the kitchen because that's what the uh, previous owner had put. I we prefer the the stone look, but um, so I think the chimney look better with stone. Well, you need a, d a good detail on that stone to make sure it's the right stone. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I mean, it's up to you guys what you want, brick or stone, for a veneer on that concrete chimney or adobe, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Considering the modern flavor of the uh, addition, I, I don't think that it's really a stopper either way. I think brick, brick is more, it's easier to find somebody to do. Okay. Um, and stone, it, it really, as Mr. Cracknell says, depends an awful lot on the stone. Uh. Um, but if you find something that you like, I, I would certainly support either. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Okay. There's like four tons of granite behind the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's a veneer stone you're going to be putting on there, or a veneer brick. Yeah. Mm. I'm guessing. Really? Yeah. They, they don't make them out of brick? unit masonry anymore? Funny. They might. <laughs> no, they. Yes, of course they do. But I doubt if somebody would, you know, make a, a solid stone chimney. I don't no, think it I would be no, veneer. Yeah. We always did. <clears throat> Anyways, right. so yeah, that's it. Do you have anything else? No, yeah, just the question. other thing I was going to add is, Margo, you had talked. We were originally when we put our first submission in, we thought about hardy board, but you know, once we found that there were some wood products like the Mybeck. Uh, oh yeah, those are great. Yeah, I hope they still make it because I can only find it on the French Canadian website for the- Mybeck the, shingles? Or? Oh, no. The shingles they have, but the- The clapboard. The clapboard. The clapboard clap yep. is only in French, so uh, let's see if we can get it down here. But they're, Go to they're uh, primed and painted. Yeah, they're, and I've been doing yeah. a lot of research on them. Yeah. The best so, so we're gonna look, work with that and that's, Pretty much the same as putting Hardy in and painting it. So yeah, look much better. Yeah, just paint it on both sides. Yeah, what's that? Paint it on both sides. Yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh, some of them are just. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So I guess we need a motion and to continue. Mm -hmm. Oh, so moved. I'll second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we're, 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 we're just, we have to go to Board of Adjustments next, oh. Amy, right? Or, you yeah. can come back here while you're doing that. We can. Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
Alrighty then, we're going to continue with a petition of Noble Island Condominium <coughs> Association owner for property located at 500 Market Street, units 4L to 15R, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations to the existing structure, remove and replace existing cantilever deck with new raised decks on concrete footings, as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on Assessor Map 120 is Lot 2, lies within the Character District 4-L1 and the Historic District. <coughs> Who is here to present this? Welcome. Evening. My name is Michael Street with CP Management, and I'm here on behalf of the Board of Directors for Nobles Island Condo Association. <coughs> Going to start somewhere? Sure, yeah. Um, so these cantilever decks are original to the buildings, um, built in approximately 1983. Um, it's hard to tell from those pictures, but the cantilevered steel beams are well rusted out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those cantilevered steel beams um, go through the foundation right underneath several of the commercial sliding glass doors. And so the driving factor behind replacing the decks is just getting those doors back operational. So that means cutting the steel off at the foundation and then demoing those cantilever decks and building raised, raised decks set on um, uh, footers, concrete footers, uh, pier or sauna tube. Um, and um, the, so the, the reason why the, the doors don't open anymore is because the mm -hmm. engineer found where the steel sits on the, the concrete foundation, the salt air over time has caused that, that steel to kind of grow and, and rust. Uh, so the rust is growing underneath the steel and the and top of the foundation. So the steel has actually got a fulcrum point now where it's kind of doing one of these. Mm -hmm. um, and they've got the HVAC condensers on the end of the decks too. Um, just carrying some weight towards the end of it. So we figured just cut the steel off, build a, a regular raised deck, um, uh, put the, the condensers back where they are existing, um, and, <clears throat> and close those in like they are now, but using the same decking material uh, that we're putting on the deck to kind of create a corral around the HVAC condensers. Um, same footprint, no change to the footprint of the deck. Uh, it's not going to be any closer to the water. Um, the decking material is going to be composite like it is now. It's going to be uh, uh, a uh, AZAC um, called Trek. It's the, the, the line's called Trek Enhance. Um, just a composite decking. And it'll be the similar grayish color uh, deck boards. <clears throat> May I? Certainly. Is is this similar work that we approved a few years ago, or is this yeah, the same? Exactly. These same units, different units. Nope. Okay. Same. I, I think the permit expired, didn't it? And you've refiled. Oh, okay. Yeah, we never got as far as the building permit. What happened was we got approvals from uh, you folks, planning board, we're all good to go. Went through the bidding process, and that was right when the lumber prices like skyrocketed, and we're like looking at astronomical pricing, and we're going, well, why don't we just wait a year and see what the lumber prices d do and then the whole this approval being a one-year uh, expiration just went by the wayside and we missed it so well, i was in favor of it in the past so i yeah. i would support it again i do have a quick question yes, um <clears throat> some of the photographs and i don't remember i may have asked the same question before um <laughs> is Showing that the ducts really do cantilever out and below them is it like drops away down into the water So where you have the edge of the decks and there's like a good I don't know four or five foot drop there. What are you just gonna see big? Concrete posts sticking out of no good question um, So the decks <laughs> as they exist right now with this footprint don't extend over that drop-off they're all, I think the closest one is yeah, building go, A. Can you zoom into the bottom left? This one? Yeah, that's the one I was looking at. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, I know. oh no. I got it. There you go. So, yeah, so far, farther back there, 
Yep. That, that corner. is building C. Mm -hmm. um, and so that back left corner, so you can't really tell, like, it looks like it drops off right where the deck is, but it doesn't really drop off until you get to the far left where it's like a lighter gray color. Okay. So like that dark gray color is actually flat, but it looks like it's a big slope. Yeah. Okay. These concrete piers are also held back from the edge of the deck. Yeah, they're two feet in from the very end of the yeah. deck. Okay. So they're going to be sitting underneath the carrying beam, which is two feet in from the end of the deck. Okay. And the construction of the decks individually will be pretty much the same? Yeah. You got some that are open, you got some that are screened, you got? So yep. This that won't change. No. Nope. We don't need a picture of what it'll look like. It'll look like this with flat and even and better support. Exactly. Okay. So if there's no other questions, I'm going to ask if anybody in the public would like to speak on this application. On Zoom. Nobody online. Nobody online. Nobody here wants to speak on this. I'm going to close this public hearing. And I look for a motion. Move to approve as presented. I'll second. Uh, Rich, can you give some finding? Um, yes. There. Um, it's hmm. conservation enhancement of principal property values and it's compatibil uh, compatibility of innovative technologies for the surrounding properties. Very good. Um, all right. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> and you have your permission. Thank you. Yep. Good luck. Don't Thank fall you. in the water. <laughs> Petition of James Williams, James William Woods and Anna Roline Minardi, owners for property located at 1 Walton Alley, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing structure, install new windows with and replace existing windows as per plan on file in the planning department said property is shown on assessor map 103 is lot 27 lies within general residence b and historic district mr chairman i'd like to re recuse myself from this application all right certainly good evening mark janini from mckinney architecture i'm here with uh, richard desjardin from our office uh the project has been before you a couple times uh we received HDC approval originally in September of 2022. And then we were back for some modifications to uh, Windows similarly uh, uh, last December. So we're here today for a few modifications to the uh, previous approval uh, that relate to Windows and a rear overhang. Uh, so on page A1, the, fir the first modification that we're looking for approval for uh, on the left, uh, is the uh, the addition that's part of the house, part of the project, and the owner wanted to add a second floor window to that addition, where we feel this helps balance out kind of the overall uh, elevation. Uh, also on the same page there on the right, uh, at our last approval, <coughs> our last admin approval, we had asked to change that attic window there to an egress window, a casement. Since then, we've removed uh, what was the attic, or any scope in the attic, so we no longer need an egress window. So we want to revert back to um, restoring the window that was previously there. Uh, so that's what shows up there on page A2. What about the roof canopy here? I was going to get to that when you saw the straight on. But so yes, the, the roof canopy is part of the addition. Um, that is also a part of the request. There's an existing canopy that right now sticks out about nine inches. It's pretty much just a, a little shed. Uh, the owner would like to provide something a little more substantial so it actually provides some cover uh, in inclement weather when you're using the rear door. Uh, the rear door will be the, the door that's accessed most of the time being adjacent to the driveway and also the new detached garage that was previously approved. Um, so that, that overhang is a gabled overhang it's two feet deep and uh, five feet wide, so there's about a foot on either side of the door. So we weren't trying to make something too large, but something that provided some protection. Uh, also, uh, on this same sheet here, 
the owner wanted to add a additional second floor window for a bedroom uh, on the second floor so that the bedroom in that in that area would only uh, would have two windows instead of just one and then also on this sheet the owner is looking to uh, replace the existing or the current casement window uh, that's shown up in the top right there that's the kitchen uh, that window was installed sometime probably in the 80s or 90s. Uh, doesn't necessarily, wasn't, uh, isn't historic in any nature. But they would like to replace it with one of the windows that's being removed from another elevation. So it would match and also be historic. So it would be uh, moved and restored and, and located on that. And then again adjusted so that it was in line with both the upper and first floor windows. Hopefully being more uh, appropriate for the building. Uh, and that's it. And then on the, the cover page, there's a uh, detail of the bracket that would go with the, uh, the proposed overhang at the rear entrance. Oh, yeah. Questions? Comments? Questions? Pretty simple. Yeah. Karen? Uh, but it's a nice project. I'd like to change it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Upon looking at the site, I couldn't help but notice that the you had concrete was poured where there would normally be a wooden sill. And I'm wondering, is that going to be covered? Is there going to be some sheathing brought over that? Are the clapboards or is there going to be a mud sill or what is going to be over that concrete? Yeah, so the concrete was poured uh, to help, well, the, the entire sill was deteriorated around a majority of the building, particularly in the northeast corner. Usually they replace the sill with another sill. Yes. yes. In, the, in this case, they chose to basically build a grade beam to help stabilize the top of the uh, rubble foundation. Um, but yes, it will be covered. Uh, the sheathing overhangs uh, the, the concrete that's been poured, so that will allow them to uh, basically continue the clapboard down over it so it will appear from the exterior the same uh, as it did when they started the work okay so the concrete is back far enough yep. as far as it, the plane of it is back that's okay. the, the intent yep that's anything else <clears throat> just one quick question on the south elevation I like the adding the fourth window but should there be some alignment between the top windows and the bottom windows or is that how uh, well, currently, all the other windows exist except for the one that we're oh, proposing okay. adding on the second floor. So there's th currently three windows on the top floor and four windows on the ground floor. Okay. So would anybody in the public like to speak on this application? And there's no one online, so I'm going to close the public hearing and wait for some sort of motion. I move that we approve this um, application as presented. Seconded. Um, <clears throat> this um, has this really simple project that makes a lot of sense and adds a lot of symmetry. So this um, complements and enhances the architectural and historic character and uh, is consistent with special and defining character of surrounding properties. Yeah. I would like to add uh, on the south elevation that that second floor window, when, when they open that wall up, they might find the original framing for a second floor window there because it, it mm -hmm. looks like it uh, certainly belongs there. Mm -hmm. Okay, all, the, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And those against? All right, you have your approval. Thank you. Um, Thank you. John, at the beginning, you forgot to announce the postponements. Can you do that real fast? What do we have? We have the two. two of them at the end. 129 State and 765 Middle. Yeah. Okay. I might as well do them at the end. Right, yeah. I think there's someone here for one of them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, this is very not, this is not good, John. Uh, request to postpone petition of 129 State Street LLC owner for property located at 129 State Street, wherein permission is requested to allow exterior renovations to an existing structure at a masonry parapet. 
As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 107 as lot 47 lies within character district four and historic districts. Um, do we have a motion to postpone? Yeah, the second one is, is also. There's also a second one. So we do right. the motion together. <clears throat> Request to postpone petition of David A. Sinclair and Nicole D. J. Giusto, owners for property located at 765 Middle Street, wherein permission is requested to allow the new construction of a detached garage with living space above as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 148 in lot as lot 37 and lies within general residence A and historic districts. So we have those two. Do I have a motion? Sure, I move to postpone those two. To May. Yeah. To May. To May. Right. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So now we have petition of Marcia C. Peel and Gary Evan Lowe, owners for property located at 105 South Street, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing structure, add solar panels to the existing roof line, as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 110 as lot 11 and lies within the general <coughs> residence B and historic districts. Who is here to present this? I'm Gary Lowe, 105 South Street, and with me I have Vasilis Papa Zacharias from the Sunrun Corporation. All righty. Um, well, Nick just left. He usually, he usually <laughs> goes through the... the uh, Do you want to just give us a little rundown of what you're doing <laughs> here? Well, How high off the roof they are and what color they are, etc.? Okay, fine. Uh, there are 12 <coughs> panels in all, and in the center of them is a, the existing chimney from 1925, um, still functioning with the furnace below it. Um, there will be wires running over the back of the, of the north side of the roof and down the side where all the utilities come into the building to the inverters and uh, the net metering system that goes to the public utilities net metering system. The panels themselves are black. You can see that in the fourth and fifth sheet of the application, and they'll be surrounded by gray shingles, which exist now, uh, allowing fire department to go up the sides and, you know, have access to the rest of the roof. Uh, that's looking north uh, down the sidewalk uh, at the panels. This is, they aren't there yet. This was represented by... Sun run, they did a good job. From the front of the house, they're invisible, and from the other direction, they're invisible. It's only looking north that you can see this section of the panel. And I can show you guys. Um, um, you have to go up to the microphone. Oh, sure. Sure, come on over. Put your name in, please. How are you doing? My name is Vasilis Papa Zacharias. Um, I can show you guys. I do have photos of the actual panels on a house, different house, obviously, but just if you guys need a reference. Mm -hmm for viewpoints? Or? Certainly. Hmm. Some of them uh, are, you know, very black, and some of well, them yeah. are well, bluish. You have to go to a microphone if you're going to speak. Yeah, so just, uh, just <coughs> show us this. Yeah. So the new ones are all black and black. <coughs> they have the skirts on the front. Obviously, these are turned the other way. Uh, for Gary, they're going to be vertical. Yep. But they all put the skirts in the front. That way, you don't see underneath them at all. Um, well, the birds and the squirrels not, out too. Yeah, they're about, I want to say about this high from the way they're going now. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, do you, the mirror, so you is there a squirrel guard or something around the perimeter? You can't you can put a squirrel guard if you would like to, but typically most uh, critters do not go underneath because they don't like the temperature. Oh. by our experience but they do sell credit cards if that's an option that you wanted to, to put on to as well but we do put the skirts on the front that way you don't see anything Thank you. okay <clears throat> these solar panels in this entire system is a temporary leased system I pay zero dollars Sunrun puts it on the roof wires it into the system they take my electric bill 
and they charge me that fee monthly. So instead of paying the electric company, I pay them. Net metering sends my excess energy in the middle of July back to the power company, and when in December it's darker, I draw from that credit. Okay, it's a 25-year lease, lease for, yeah. and uh, at the end of that 25 years, I won't be around. The, <laughs> the owner who owns the house then will decide whether they mm -hmm. want to continue. And the, the solar collector efficiency drops, what, 10% during that period? Yeah, they're about 90% still efficient. Um, at the end of 25 years, oh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> this is the first time doing this, so. Um, <laughs> So yeah, the, the the panels because they're monocrystallized, they they last about thirty years or so. And then in the twenty five years, it's still about ninety percent efficient. Um, but in the end of the twenty five agreement that we have, they can remove the system at zero cost to them. What we do is we come remove the system, patch up the roof, no damage done. Uh, they can upgrade to a new one, or they can purchase the system and keep it longer if they wish to. Um, but in the end, if they wanted to remove it. That's an option there, and we can still do that. Um, but that's all up to the homeowner. They do have the options for that if they want to. You know. Can I ask you a question? Have you had any experience with the coatings? That, that move, the coating of the, so, the solar panel, is it? The coating or? It's a, a film that makes it look a little bit more like shingles. We don't. Sunrise, I believe, does not carry those. Now, I don't know if they sell something like... Uh, you know, like on, on the market, like Amazon, or you could buy like a, a sheet to put on or something, but that could affect the production. But the, the problem is if you were to fiddle with the system, it, the, it, voids, it voids the warranty because we warranty the system and maintain the system and take care of it. So if you were to fiddle with it, you know, to, to change, you know, the, the actual structure of the system or to, to, to remove something out of there or to add something to it, it could void the warranty. So that's something, you know, that it's not suggested, you know, because we, we put a production guarantee on it and we, we guarantee to Gary that we have to produce this amount of power and we do a true up report every two years to make sure that it's actually producing what we promised them or else we have to compensate them for the loss plus to fix the issue that's causing that. You know. It's a new concept in solar energy yeah. production. It's a new concept in solar energy production. When I first moved here, I was transferred by Sylvania where I was designing solar energy covers and uh, high intensity <laughs> solar covers made out of glass. And it's been a long time since then. The furnace in this house is from 1925. It's an old coal boiler, runs on city gas, uh, not very efficient. and Looking at the UNH science results, the ocean's going to be in my backyard in about 15 years. <laughs> and I thought this might be a good way to stop using fossil fuels. Healthy for the environment, healthy for the house? I believe, I'm not sure, but you guys might know too, I believe the state of New Hampshire has a, a renewable goal that it has to meet to as well by, I think, in 2025 or 2030. And I'm not sure if they, I know utility companies might get fined for that if they don't hmm. comply with it, but eventually everybody's getting that. You've probably seen it a lot in Massachusetts, happening a lot in a lot of the cities in Massachusetts. Um, a lot of the older homes, I mean any homes pretty much, they're moving into solar, the ones that are capable of producing power that don't have trees blocking, you know, the, the section, because it's just, Pretty much the only way to generate electricity right now, cheap electricity, cheaper and cleaner is, is that's the way to go, really. That's the way that everybody's going. But. Okay, thank you. And you I know. just happened to buy a house that has a 240 <laughs> degree angle that's just perfect with a 45 and degree No slope. trees. And oh, back, awesome. back 20 years ago when you approved me putting a dormer on the far side of this house, I beefed it up with individual collar ties and big plywood peak bracing as well. Ooh to support that structure, as well as now this. Hmm. All right, so do we have questions or comments here? Yes, Margo. Um, so the first thing I noticed when I went to take a look at your site <laughs> is that unfortunately there's a very long view down South Street. Your house roof is visible 
a, a long way away. All the way and to Vermont, yeah. <laughs> the fact that these are black against gray means they're they're going to stand out quite a bit. And we have approved solar panels for the historic district, but usually where they're not highly visible. Unfortunately, that the aspect of the front of your house happens to be visible. So my That's question That's why I gave you that shot so you could see exactly yeah. what you're going to see. So my question is, mm -hmm. you have a little addition out the back. Uh, yes. Is it large enough or capable of taking some of the panels that are so visible in the front and moving them to the back so yes. that it's less visible? That back section is the kitchen areas of both units, and it is lower than the main roof, being mm -hmm. shaded by the main roof. Mm -hmm. So there's no sun hitting half of it. Okay. So that's probably not a very good option. All right. My question was answered. I noticed that too. You have the alleyway that makes it even more visible when you're going down South Street. So you're going to see it from a long way, and it's quite visible. And we're struggling because we worry about global warming <laughs> too. And and, and the, the original the original roof was it black. On a historic district. I know. And the, and the view, and one of the things that I know that's up, your concern. And one of the things that was presented, and it hasn't been built yet, so we're eager to see it, was this idea of a glazing that only reduces, they said, three or four percent of efficiency, but makes it less glare, blends it in more with the roof. Well, so I, but I, but I still worry about the visibility here. As, district. as a scientist, and I had solar labs on top of GTE Sylvania, there, we couldn't find a glass covering, which has the highest transparency relative to plastics and other polycarbonates, that had lower than 8% absorption. Okay? You're saying three. I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah. Bachelor of no, Science, RIT. You won't see that. You. These lenses take 10% sure. of my transmission. It's a compromise. Just blast. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, as a city councilor in Portsmouth, I have to be as supportive of solar panels as I possibly can. We're dealing with rising tides. We're dealing with environmental issues everywhere. Um, we get monthly a letter from the middle school students every month telling us why aren't there more solar panels in Portsmouth. Uh, we had a student who's going to do a study on um, City Hall, you know, and see, take a look at our electrical bill and see what benefits we could get. Um, I've been called out personally for not having them on my own restaurant downtown. Um, I, th I think, obviously, our, it's our job up here to be concerned with um, how everything looks. Um, I think if you took, possibly, if you removed the first two panels that are closest to the street, mm -hmm. then it would be much less visible. Um, but I, I do want to be as supportive of, of solar panels as I possibly can because I know if we just always put looks first and uh, like all uh, these other issues. I do have a question. Can you put the photo on of the um, blueprint real quick? Is it before? Number three, I think. There it is. So yeah, you mean these two? Yep. You, you mean those two, right? Rich? Yes. So you were. So if we were. Just the two panels closest two to panels. the street. Yeah, because we can still redesign if we if we would have to um, to do it. Like I could go back to my engineering team and um, have them take those two and maybe push the the system like a few inches over to you fit them in one. the backside. You get yeah. one back here. You might be able to get one back there. It, slide it, this over, right? So meaning. The chimney, the chimney would would yeah. cover that. That um, it would nope. shade it, so it wouldn't be uh, a, a lot of production on it. Um, what what I what I uh, I'd say is, if we were to say to push the system, say a couple inches to the front, remove those two front panels, put them in the back side onto the left, right there. Yeah. What do you think, Gary? Yes, Reagan. Wait, wait. Um, I'm to, in order to have the same amount of panels to get the production that, that he needs for the house. Wait, yes. Understood. Um, I, I also have the same concerns about mm -hmm. the visibility. Mm -hmm. I also really want to see us 
put more solar in town. Um, you've got it's loads of free energy that we can be harnessing. Mm -hmm. um, my concern with the historic district is that it's been in our guidelines that it should not be visible from main public ways or you know on the fronts of the buildings and facade views. Um, and so we've been trying to be as um, consistent as possible with applying that. So I think until we as a group can come together and say, okay, we are going to allow solar panels to be more visible on our historic buildings, I can't support this because it's inconsistent with what we've done in the past. Um, I don't, I, I personally would like to see more solar panels. I personally don't see them as terrible as um, some changes and alterations could be because they are reversible. You can take it off and you have your roof back and it's, mm -hmm. it's all fine. Um, but it is a major visual component. Can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Um, the original roof when I bought it in 79 was black, the old mm -hmm. asphalt shingles. If I were to take that gray surround away and make those black shingles so they match the black collectors, would that sway your artistic uh, uh, subjective view? Not really. I think that would be helpful. It's the general, glass, isn't it? But it's, <laughs> it's the visibility of the glass. And again, I want to support this. I just want to be consistent. I want our decisions to be consistent. So I think that we, have, we as a group have to figure out how we're going to move forward if we all want to. to After her. Can, we, can we work with you on that? <laughs> I mean, make me a demonstration case if you wish. Tell us what you'd like, yeah. make decisions, and this is a visible case, mm -hmm. and it's a great roof for it, mm -hmm. and it's a great company. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd never heard of this concept. Everybody that I know, Rich, Deep, and Tima, everybody, they put panels on their roof, and it's $25,000, and there's a payback period, and dear Rich is a friend. He's 77. He's never going to see the payback, but he's running his heat pumps off of these, and his, his electric bill is maybe $15 in the middle of the winter. You, you don't have to convince me. I know, I know. But the way he does. It's the visual. Um, I just want to be positive with our community yeah. and yeah. see what we can do in the historic district. Um, let's just um, let us comment here. Yeah, okay. I, I won't be supporting it. I'm sorry. Um, I, I just, this would be the, uh, this would be horrible for our community in terms of the historic district mm -hmm. because your, your roof is perfect. So is your neighbor, so is your other neighbor. I, I just can't support that. Um, outside the district, I have my own personal uh, thoughts about these panels. I mean, where are they manufactured? I believe they're assembled in the United States. Uh, some material probably does come from China like everything else. So I won't be supporting it. Um, yes. Um, I'll just say, I, th I think that we should treat every case by case. Um, I do, you know, I don't want to treat anyone dif differently than I treat someone else. Um, but, you know, solar panels is a new technology. I mean, did we do this when we put in electrical meters uh, when electricity? You know, I, I um, but I think we need to start moving forward. I think they already exist on 90 Pleasant Street. Am I correct in this yep. board to prove that? Yep. So we have approved solar panels. Um, I definitely will be doing more research and coming to present uh, some sort of policy change, I think, at the council level. Because um, I hate to see this, and it's going to keep happening, and that's why we're not going to have renewable energy in Portsmouth. Um, and it's going to only cost our taxpayers, our residents, and all of us. So, um, but I'll just state that. And the energy running on the phone poles comes from coal and uranium, okay? And that's visible and was never here historically. Uh, uh, anyone else? Uh -huh. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to say I'm, I'm, I, I recognize the color issues. I think there's, uh, but along with the color issues, there's textural issues. There's also reflectivity issues. Um, and and I, for me, it's too soon. I'm, I'm not ready for this uh, on, on a, a street in the South End. And I've got a house similar to yours that will someday be underwater. I, if you could promise me this, these solar panels would make it so my house didn't end up in the water, I'd be on it, and you know that. Um, 
I do. I, I think that the time for the historic district to reconsider uh, solar panels on our historic houses is when we're done filling in all of the flat roof buildings in this town where the roofs are completely invisible to all passerbys, and we have tons and tons of them, if that's how you measure flat roofing, I'm not sure. Um, but there are lots of opportunities other than uh, the most sensitive architectural structures that we have in town, and I'm just not ready. I respect that, Dave. Um, and, and to Rick, I think our previous approvals for solar panels have always been on the backside. And unfortunately, there's no, it's not a good way to go. Right? Well, solar, you did one with the Sky. One we've approved, oh, you can't oh. see from the streets. Oh. Well, but you can't put it where pleasant. we want it. You we've done the worst Pleasant Street. Have been put in oh, front I know that. Dr. Know. Dan, Pleasant, pleasant Street, Street you, can see. you can see it from all the way down Court Street. You're at Court what Street, and you look, at, it, it's, 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 it's right on the corner. Next to where the fire was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was one of our very first applications for um, solar in the yeah. district, and it was kind. Of, we kind of did it as a as a trial to see how people liked it. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not giving yeah. judgment. I'm just saying that was. Yeah. Well, I, I would just like to to make some comments also on this. Um, I'm in full support of this project. Um, you have a. Uh, Essentially, uh, a 1900 New England style house um, with a, what appears to me um, some kind of asbestos siding on it. Oh, absolutely. So it has asbestos siding on it, which is a 1920s technology. Actually, it uh, worked out pretty well in the end because I've, I've noticed that most houses that have the asbestos siding removed, that the wood is usually in generally pretty good condition. Uh, having said that, um, as Reagan said, um, these can be removed, and they are a rental situation, so they might be removed, and maybe they'll have come up with uh, uh, an entirely different system at that time. Uh, I'm afraid that if we, as the historic district, start to really buckle down on these things, as it appears that we are now, um, we are part of the problem, not the solution. As much as I love the historic district, I do not see these panels as a problem. I see them up on the roof, there they are. Okay, they're solar panels. I don't, I'm not gonna look at them. Why would I look at them? I'm going to be looking at the house itself um, I'm hoping that uh, Councillor Blaylock will follow through on this. And uh, as Mr. Adams said, yes, there are a lot of flat roof buildings. Something else that could be added as far as an ordinance goes is that certain amount of space on flat roofs could be required the same way that they require that these people have to now put sprinkler systems in all these buildings. 20 years ago, Sprinkler systems were very rare, but now they you know, have to be placed in uh, quite a few buildings. So that's my opinion, you know, that if, if, if you can take this away from us, I would be happy. I'm sorry. Does your company have the same deal with commercial property owners or industrial? Uh, we only do residential. We do not do commercial or industrial. Uh, We're focusing on... Um, residential homes only um, it's a big problem a lot of uh, most you know most of the homes get their power from the, the grid that's been built back in the 1890s but you know when it first started but um, wouldn't everybody else too the commercial and industrial use the same grid absolutely they do yeah but uh, you know there's other companies this the, Sunrun and Tesla are the only companies uh, I'm sure Tesla probably does commercial too and most most commercials done by dealers most of the time, um, Sunrun just focuses on residential homes right now only. So okay. we we're concentrating on that. We specialize at that. When we do, you know, when we do jobs or homes, um, everything is under one umbrella. So we our crews only do homes to make sure that the job is done correctly the first time it's done. You know, we don't do any other buildings. We just do homes. 
So um, if there's no other discussion, I'll ask for anybody in the public to speak on this. Could I say one more thing? Sure. Oh, certainly, yeah. Uh, Commissioner Blaylock, I challenge you, when you're making these decisions and when you're coming up with new plans, enlist the children that you're talking about because they're the future of our town. I'm 71. I'm not going to be around in 20 years. But get those kids, bring them to your meetings. They know what's going on and they want to help. And they'd probably love it as a school project. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I know it'd be hard to make them come to the meeting. And, you know, I know middle school students invite. probably pass their bedtime. Invite. Yeah, yeah, um, I definitely will invite them and encourage them to write letters. And, Please. Um, no, I definitely will. Okay, thank you. Because it's coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so there's nobody else out there. <laughs> well, there is. Yep. Okay. Um, David Sinclair. David, do you want to talk on to this issue? Online. Am I unmuted? Nope, we can hear you, David. Okay, great. I also um, am concerned about the visual component of this. When you move down South Street with the sun glaring you in the eye, uh, in addition to the uh, solar panels, it's just not visible. You can't see the traffic. I, I actually see a safety issue with solar panels uh, reflecting sun right back to your to the driver. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Right. Could I address that? Yes. When you're driving in a southerly direction, these panels are not facing you. The sun is in your eyes, yes. But these panels would not be reflecting to the north, going okay. down South Street. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So I guess I'm going to close this, and uh, I look for a motion. Well, well could I wait. make a yeah. suggestion or something? I, there, there was talk about moving these panels around, maybe taking some of them out or something like that. I don't know if you would like to bring that design back to us. Um, anything that you can do to improve the, the non-visibility <laughs> of these up towards the front of your building, um, maybe even Photoshop in a darker roof and see what, it, what that does to the look, even though it, mm, you know, I'm only so-so on that one. But so I didn't know if you wanted to try and come back with that because I, at, at this point, I, it's too visible for me to support. Nobody's gonna. You have to take your um, the microphone. To speak yeah, you back gonna, there. The, yeah. There's one you can pull out. So, if that's the case, then I would have asked for a continuance. Mm -hmm. Is this on? Okay, it's on. I was asking them for. Yeah. Right into people's TV sets. <laughs> so from, you know, just to keep it, because I believe, like, if we, if we remove these, and I think if we come, like, a couple inches forward, we can put those flush with the, with the roofing. But I can, I can get, talk to my engineer and see what they can do design-wise. Personally, I would like to keep the production the same, um, but I'll, I'll obviously want to keep you guys happy as well too. You know, to to make sure that that, that we kind of meet in the middle. You know, to yeah. both parties be happy. Um, so what I'll do is um, I'll email my engineering team. So I'll remove these two. Can we actually put the photo um, back on with the roof, with the Photoshop roof? So yeah. Other, yeah. Oh, the other one. So actually, I mean, obviously, I photoshopped that without measurements. So I'm assuming this is gonna be it's roughly somewhere right here. But if we remove like one line, it's probably gonna be around here somewhere. Like visually wise. Yeah, I'm not sure it makes a huge difference yeah. visually. Yeah. You get talking to the mic. Yeah, you need a mic. Yeah. It seems like if you are coming back with this, you'd need to look at reduced production to come up with a significant enough change. Gary, except if we if we end up putting it um, in the backside where the kitchen is, and then we'll see what the production is. Um, so meaning like remove whatever's on the front here, up to the chimney. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be better. 
I think that we um, we could do this as a continuance, and then you could come back after doing further engineering, if there's anywhere you know that you can do what you had just suggested, uh, removing them up to the chimney and try to put some on the back, and maybe uh, uh, you know get as many. Yeah, I believe we have like nine of them there. Are these the highest power um, panels? Of those hundred watts or two. Those are three nineties, actually. Oh my goodness! Uh, those are the three three nineties, and the ones that they came up with. And the uh, backing is—it's uh, a clear backing, actually. It's—it's it's a um, you know the old ones used to be the blue, and then they had the white backing on them. This one's. Um, there's two different ones that we have now. The orange, they're like black and black or black and clear, which which pretty much makes it look all black, like a mirror, yeah. uh, a low profile. So would that be all right for you? Would you? Yeah, absolutely. I can I can I can talk to. Uh, uh, you go ahead. Me? No, no. no. Oh. Do Whichever. Whoever's talking. Yeah, I can definitely talk to my engineer. See if we can move. I think we can move three of them into the left. And then the other six, I believe we might be able to put them on top of the kitchen, which is in the back addition. <coughs> and hopefully the production is, See what you, can do. you know, the same. Because I do want to make sure he gets enough to, to power his house and to have enough power, that, yes. that, you know, sure. to, to run everything. All but, right, so um, move to continue. Yeah, that's what I need. Second. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okay, so please come back with another Thank you. Plan. We will. Sounds Thank good. You very much. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you guys want some cards? <laughs> I'll yeah, I'll take them. Right. <laughs> One of the best sales that I've ever had. Yeah, he's it's, really good. Yeah. Right here at the HDC meeting. Everything's a win. Yeah. So move. Um, yeah, we adjourning. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Thank you very much. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you.